Coming up on Hands on Android, I have a phone that folds. That's right, it's the Samsung Galaxy Z Fold 2 5G. And I've got some tips and tricks coming at you next. Hands on Android is brought to you from LastPass Studios. You're focused on security, but are your employees? Well, LastPass can ensure that they are by making access and authentication seamless, whether employees are working in the office or remotely. Visit lastpass.com slash twit to learn more. This is Twit. This episode of Hands on Android is brought to you by LastPass. Allow your remote workforce the ability to do their best work securely without jumping through hoops. Visit lastpass.com slash twit. Hello, welcome to Hands on Android. I'm Jason Howell, and I've been having a lot of fun in the past 24 hours because I happen to have right here the Z Fold two samsung's foldable device it really is a premium device and i gotta say it's a lot of fun i mean you gotta get past the lock screen of course that's not where the fun is at um it's it's just it's a form factor that i have not played around with at all since the whole foldable thing started um i mean a little less than two years ago but we've seen a lot of iterations we saw an iteration of this particular device last year and uh, it got a lot of things wrong this is the revision the revised version of the z fold and i gotta say in 24 hours i am really impressed really interested in this device so i wanted to spend some time and take a look at some of the ways that you can improve your experience with the Z Fold 2 if you happen to pick one of these up. Now, if you're picking one of these up, you already know it is not an inexpensive device. This device costs around $2,000, so uh, you better have a reason for picking it up, even if that reason is just, it's really cool. So. I'm gonna show you a few things that you can do with your device. You probably have, may have heard of some of these, but some of them actually require a little bit of work to activate. They aren't set by default, so let's dive right in. So first of all, let's start with multitasking because when I look at a device like the Z Fold 2 and all of the screen real estate that it gives you on the inside, for me, that seems like the most, like the, the lowest hanging fruit is to use all of this real estate and have different apps going and everything. And thankfully, Samsung's thought of this. Uh, it's one of the reasons why this phone is pretty awesome. So swipe from the right of the display and you'll reveal a few of your most recent apps up top. This is a feature that's in other Samsung phones. It's not just here. Uh, so you, you have your most recent apps up top, plus more apps below it that you might want to launch. And actually, you can launch any of the apps on your device that you like by tapping the All Apps button and you can scroll through there and find your first app let's say youtube in this case so i'm just going to drag that out now with this first app youtube it's just going to go full screen so you know that widening widened out on this uh, interior display you get the full youtube experience in a larger screen now we're going to swipe out from the side again and this time, let's grab something different. Maybe we'll grab the Samsung internet browser as the other example. And as I tap and hold this and swipe it around, I can really drop this second window in a number of places. As you can see, it could be up top, it could be on either side or down below. So in this case, let's place it down below and see what happens. And not bad, with all of this screen real estate, you can actually enjoy this split screen experience. You have plenty of room up top, plenty of room down below to really just kind of enjoy the layout uh, as it is. The window divisions are adjustable, so I can scoot that up so YouTube gets less and Samsung internet gets more. I might need more of that space for you know interacting with the with the web than I do with the video that's just always play, playing. But um, there is more. Now, if we swipe in from the right again, I'm gonna go ahead and grab, well, my favorite app in the world, a calculator, um, just demonstration. Uh, and now I can actually split the YouTube space in half with the calculator, which means I now have three apps running simultaneously on the same display. That's neat in and of itself, but wait, there's even more. If you just have to launch a fourth app, you can, though it's not gonna split the Samsung internet uh, slot down below. Let's go ahead and bring out the Chrome browser and we can put it into its own picture-in-picture -picture window on top. Now, 
I'm not actually crazy enough to look at this current layout and say like, I could get so much more done with three windows and a picture in picture browser on top of it. But it is pretty cool that you can do this, scale it back a little bit, and maybe you get more into the realm of uh, believability as far as actually using this multitasking environment to do something and uh, stay ahead of the curve in the process. So uh, two or three apps in that main window, that's actually really usable and uh, useful and pretty awesome. All right, um, continuing apps onto the cover screen. Now this is a feature that you're gonna to have to enable in order to enjoy the benefits of. Say you're looking at an app on the inside and you decide that you want it to transition out onto the cover when you close the device. Out of the box, like I said, this is not going to work. Uh, and I can show this, see how YouTube plays on the inside and then when I close the phone, Nothing happens on the cover screen. I mean, YouTube is playing in the background, but it doesn't transition over to the cover screen like I might want. For this, you're going to have to actually activate a setting. Go settings, display, and continue apps on cover screen. And then you can go through your apps list and determine which of the apps on your device should get this royal treatment. Uh, we can activate YouTube just to illustrate here. And now when I'm playing a video on the inside, and then I close the device, it now transitions over to the cover screen and keeps playing and I can still see it and everything. That works the way I would expect. Now do note that some apps simply do not support this as it stands right now. And you can see it in the list. Instagram for one example is listed as not supporting this feature. Although when you run Instagram, even on the inside, you realize it's not really set up for a tablet view. So that's probably why maybe they'll get to it uh, in the future. All right, another thing that you've probably heard a lot about is flex mode. And that's the idea that the, the Z Fold 2 can really be in any position thanks to the awesome hinge uh, that is part of this device. Uh, it allows, even further than that, it allows for certain apps to play with the foldable display in unique ways. So you might have some content up on the top and then a division where other content is down below. So let's take the camera app as one example. Now, unfolded, we get a giant preview of my soon-to-be shot, all right? But once I pop the phone into a fold, even slightly, I just kind of move it into there slightly, everything shifts for me. Uh, on the right side of the screen, all of my camera interface features. On the left side of the screen, a preview section that's going to show off my last taken image. So as I take images, that last image is always going to be on the left and uh, I can refer to that if I need to. If I change the orientation of the device, the live view is now up top and the camera interface and previous shot are shown collectively in that bottom display. Oh, and here's YouTube. Uh, just as another example that puts the video content in the top spot and then puts the comments and information in the bottom spot. So, uh, Maybe best to just not look at the bottom display most of the time. This episode of Hands on Android is brought to you by LastPass. Now with 25 million users and 70,000 businesses, it's no surprise why they are the award-winning number one password manager. They help you transition your remote workforce. Single sign-on manages employee access in a centralized view, so IT always has insight into who has access to what from where. LastPass has won eight awards this year. You don't have to take just our word for it. LastPass speaks for its Itself. Visit lastpass.com slash twit to find out how they can help you. That's lastpass.com slash twit. All right. Now, the camera system on the Z Fold 2 is pretty interesting. And actually, they've done, they put some pretty capable cameras into the Z Fold 2. I'm, I've been really impressed with Samsung's cameras in the S20 Ultra and the Note 20 Ultra. And the Z Fold 2, I've only just begun taking pictures here, but it can do some pretty cool things. Uh, so it's definitely worth taking a look at. This first one is easy. If you're taking a picture of someone, you can set the front display to show that person their own framing. So uh, in the camera app, all you have to do is simply look in the top left corner. There's a little button there that looks kind of like a switch and it says off by default because it's not always on. Just 
turn it on. It's pretty obvious. And with that, the camera preview is now on the cover screen for the person that you're taking a shot of to see themselves. Now, just a word of advice, and we realize this at Twit because we deal with this a lot. If I'm talking to the viewfinder, it looks like I'm looking off the screen, right? Because I'm like framing myself, but I'm looking over there and you, the person looking at the actual image, can see that I'm looking off onto the side. That's a risk here. So make sure and warn the person that you're taking a picture of to use it for framing if they would like, but then don't look there when you take the picture. Otherwise your picture is gonna you know, have them looking slightly off screen. Uh, something to keep in mind. Um, also, this allows for you to take selfies, selfie shots with the best cameras on the phone. So when you do that, you can actually end, end up taking your selfies with the rear facing camera, right? You just face it around like that and take a picture instead of just the single actual selfie camera, which isn't quite as good. So you get a couple of bonuses out there and you get all the pixels when you do that. Okay, this other one is super cool. So we're gonna go ahead and activate video mode on the phone. And now down in the bottom left corner is a circle shown in crosshairs, kind of looks like a circle in crosshairs. Tap that. Now, this feature is best illustrated by just showing what's happening here. It's auto framing. And basically what it does, it automatically reframes the shot based on where it sees the action. So as I walk around the room, it actually recognizes that I am the focus of the shot and it zooms in, it pans, it follows me around. It's just kind of a neat, neat feature, especially considering the fact that you can prop up the phone thanks to the hinge system and just set it down and frame it properly into the, the general area that you're shooting and then activate this feature and you'll be sure that it's following you around uh, the entire time. And of course, it's not seamless, uh, but it's, it's a nice set it and forget it sort of feature. Uh, definitely a lot of fun to play with. And finally, I think this one's just important more than it is fun. Uh, on the side of the Z Fold 2 is the fingerprint sensor. It also happens to be the power button. And by default, out of the box, this is set so your display has to actually be on in order for that, that finger sensor, which isn't working right now, there we go, that fingerprint sensor to actually detect a fingerprint and to, uh, to activate. Um, but there is a way to make it so that even with the display off, you can press it and boom, it comes on. You don't have that extra delay, that extra time that it takes for everything to, uh, to ramp up. So go ahead and go into settings, biometrics and security and fingerprints. And you're looking for fingerprint always on and you want to activate that setting if you want this uh, to be lit up. And now with the display off, I can simply rest my finger on that fingerprint sensor. It lights up for me. The phone unlocks. Uh, I would say the downside to this is that it's always kind of like searching for a fingerprint, which I don't know the, the impact that that has on battery, but I do know that at times when I'm just picking up my phone, it's not like it's inadvertently unlocking my device because you really do have to kind of line it up perfectly in order to unlock, but you can feel a little haptic kick, which is the phone telling you, hey, I tried to scan for that fingerprint and it was incorrect. So that might get a little annoying, but I just find not having to wait or wake the display in order to unlock my device to be a nice trade-off. So something to consider if you get the Z Fold 2, which, I mean, I'm only 24 hours into playing around with the Z Fold 2. I'm not sure that on 24 hours I can really, you know, encourage someone to uh, pick up any device. 24 hours is a very short amount of time. Uh, it does, I mean, I'm, I've used far too many fingerprint uh, sensor attempts, so I'm just going to close it. Um, it is neat, though, and I mean, you're, you're spending a lot for this device, so you probably want to buy it for more reasons than just it is neat, but it is a pretty fantastic device that's worth at least playing around with. Even if you just have the opportunity to, to thumb around with one for an hour, you'll really enjoy it. It's, it's definitely a glimpse into 
the future of these devices. And I hope to see a lot more of this level and of this quality coming soon. Send me your tips, tricks, uh, emails, all that to HOA at twit.tv. You can find the show at twit.tv slash HOA. That's where you can subscribe to the show in audio and video formats, uh, the podcast, all the podcatchers are listed there, and you can jump out to YouTube and subscribe there. Uh, overall, just subscribe. And I will see you next week on Hands on Android. Thank you uh, so much to John Ashley for editing this episode. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time. Want more Twit? Check out Tech News Weekly, twit.tv slash TNW. Tech News Weekly is a show where Jason Howell and I bring the latest and greatest interviews to you from the people making and breaking the tech news. Twit.tv slash TNW.